The Gemara says like this, bottom paragraphs of 21b1. We said from the third day of the Shiva until the end of the Shiva, what it called, he, he's allowed to respond to greetings made to him, but he's not allowed to initiate the greetings. From that point on, he can do it regular. After seven days, he can go regular. So says the Gemara Viramenu, but I've got a contradiction with another Bryce. So, if one meets his friend who happens to be an Ovel, during 30 days of Shloishim, not the seven days of Shiva, but the 30 days of Shloishim, he can offer him the Tachnudim, the Gondolans. Man is shown by Shlomo, but he's not allowed to greet him. He's allowed to greet him, and he's not allowed to offer him any tachum, any more condolences. If the guy wiped out and he married another woman within the Shloishim, we're on 21b2, and the Gemara is going to explain how he's allowed to do that in a, in a minute or two. So let's just give that a minute. Okay? The Gemara is going to talk about it in a minute. He's not allowed to enter the home to offer him tatchumen. Why? Because of his new wife. Obviously, the new wife will be insulted if you come in and you're coming to console him over his old wife. But if you find him in the marketplace, the he offers him consolation and quietly and seriously. So what do you see? It would see this is a contradiction to the previous Bryce, which said that once Shiva passes, he can everything goes back to normal. Here you see it doesn't. Once Shiva has passed, he can greet others since those people are at peace. We can wish them shalom aleichem, peace unto you, because they're at peace. Achirim, but others ain't shalom b'shalom. Others cannot ask him, cannot greet him, shalom aleichem, peace unto you. Shu ain't shalom b'shalom, because he's not in peace, because he's still in the shalom. Says the Gemara about Tani Meishim, but it says in the first prize he's allowed to return the greeting. It means that they are allowed to greet him. Says the Gemara de Lo Yadana. We're talking about he should not, one should not greet a mourner until after the Shloishim. The first price that says that they greet is where they didn't know that he was a mourner. And now he has to go in and if they unwittingly greet him, in such a case, he's allowed to respond in kind as long as the first three days of Shiva have passed. Says the Gemari, then over there, in the case where he greeted somebody during the first three days of Shiva, he should also do the same thing. If somebody inadvertently, not knowing that he's sitting Shiva, says, Shalim Aleichem, peace unto you, he should be allowed to answer back, peace unto you as well. During the first three days of Shiva, the proper response when somebody greets you, unknowingly and says Shalom Aleichem is to tell them I'm sorry you do not know but I am a mourner I am sitting civil but after the first three days a person does not have to go ahead and inform the person that he's a mourner and he can answer back the regular way and peace on to you as well okay so far so good everybody's got it so far yep. Yep. Okay. The whole Gemara that we're going to do today is along this line. Okay? It's not typical Gemara. It's along the same line. What is the proper behavior? Simple. It's really more about behavior and honor and honor to the deceased. Now, Viriminu, but I've got another contradictory very I saw how Moiti is very well if one who greets us meets his friend who's sitting in mourning. During 12 months following the death of the relative. 
He opens him tantrumim, condolescence, and he does not greet him at all. After 12 months, everything goes back to normal. If he is allowed to console him from the side, indirectly, that means if he had not met him in 12 months, he can say, oh, I heard about your loss, you know, whatever, but always to the side, quietly. Amar if you find you have a who lost somebody over 12 months ago, you can offer him condolences. And, and, and offers him tantrum. What is he compared to? To the person who broke his foot and then the foot healed. Okay? Umatsi Raifa, and then he finds a doctor. Bahamalai, the doctor tells him, Kalach Etsli, come to me for treatment. Shani, Shaiber, I'll break your leg again. Ba'erpana and I can cure it. Kadesha Tayda Shaman Shali Yopin. So you should know how great my remedies are. Obviously, that's ridiculous. It's the same thing. If say 12 months have passed. Don't go ahead and give condolences to a mourner. So the Gemara writer really says, you see from here, this is a contradiction from the earlier Baraisa, which said only up to 30 days. This Baraisa says up to 12 months. You should be careful. You should go ahead and give him. You should be menachin him. As the Gemara like Kasha, the one that says 12 months, is dealing with the loss of a father and a mother. Ah, oh, Bashar Kroyden. Here we're talking about other relatives. In the case of parents, the bereavement period is much longer. So up to 12 months, it's okay to give the Chama. Everybody else, after 30 days, it stops. So it says the Gemara, awesome. Nami Yadabi Imitat Chumim Minatsad. But here, too, in the case of somebody who lost the other relatives, he should be allowed to give him Tanchumim. From the side, like you know, not not publicly on the side. You say, by the way, I heard you went through a tragedy. You know, my condolences. Says the Gemara in a Chadami. You're right. Of course, that's proper. My What does it mean when the Bryce says you should not offer him condolences after Shlishim? Kedarka means in the normal manner. You can talk to him from the side without actually mentioning the deceased and comfort him that way. Like you go, hey, how you doing? You feeling okay? Right? You know, that's how you could do it. Okay? So again, this whole Gemara, in the end of the day, is a real question of what is the proper, proper decorum? Okay? This is a decorum Gemara. Okay? And even today, the truth is, if one meets somebody who lost his parents along the way, it happened to me this past year, where people hadn't seen me in a long time, they would say, oh, we're in the year. Let me just tell you, I'm walking me in Achim And that was because it was a parent. And that would be direct. Like this Gemara, like we just learned. Tanu Rabbanon, the Rabbanon with 21B3. Avo Shloishi Yomim Arishayman, Avo whose immediate relative was Nifter, okay, and was unaware of the death, okay? He was unaware of the death, and he comes onto the scene. In other words, he comes from Boca Raton, he comes to New York, and he finds out that, unfortunately, a death happened in the family. So now what does he do? The other relatives have already been sitting Shiva, right? They've already began Shiva a few days ago. So says the Gemara. If he comes from a nearby place, he can't shiver with them. He's in a place that's near them. If he's within one day's travel of them, so today that would be even on an airplane. One day, the world is so small. The truth is you can travel anywhere in one day, right? He would count it even though he came late. But a day's travel in reality is counted 
to be equal to 40 mil. That's 80,000 amma. Okay, again, 80,000 amma depends on what it is. But today it becomes, today the rules might be much different because today the whole world is within one day's travel. And today we find out things almost instantaneous through WhatsApp, etc. Now, if you come from a distant place, he starts counting sugar on his own, so he's, he sits for more days. His seven days will extend further than his relatives. But he arrives after the first three days, then no matter what, he sits shiver on his own. Shimon Oima, Avinu Bob, Yoyvashvi, Vinibi shows up on the last day of Shiva, the last hour of Shiva. He mocked Kara from a close place. My name, my name, he counts with them. Amama, Shlaishi Yavim, Rishon, Bob, he mocked Kara, my name, my name. Within the first three days of Shiva, he comes from a close place. He starts sitting with them. He doesn't start from the beginning of Shiva, he comes in in the middle. Okay, Amar of Chia Baraba, Amar of Yochanan, who she is, God of the Bais, the Bais. It's if he's the most senior member of the house when the Shiva was observed. So, in such a case, in other words, when the most senior member, the grandfather, the great grandfather, is in the house, then the most junior member upon his arrival joins together with the older member. But if it's the senior member is not. Of, is not present, then the late arrival, the late arrival must sit shiver on his own, regardless of when he arrived. Ibayalu. So in this the Gemara asks the question, and we're on today's stop. Hello, Jerry. How are you? Okay. Plus, it says like this: We are now on twenty-two A one. Halach Godol Babai is the basic verse. If the most senior member of the family. Went with the Oren, went with, went with the dead to the cemetery so that the other people were sitting shiver first. And then he returns. Now, what's the din? Does he join in with the others wherever they're holding in the shiva, or he has to begin shiva on his own? Says the Gemara Tashma. Got an answer. He counts with them. My name, my But we have another Bryson that teaches us he counts on his own. Like you're talking, yes. Talk. yes. I, I thought Shiva didn't start until after the burial. So, they were, as we're about to see, we are starting. Where we're up to, we're on Chaf Base of an olive right on the top. 22A1. 22 A1. Okay. 22A1. Jeff, the answer to your question is, so Jeff just answered the question. I, Jeff said, I thought Shiva starts when the body is buried. So now the answer is, Jeff, that when, the, that when, the body, when, when the body is being taken to Eretz Yisrael, so when the body is being taken to Eretz Yisrael, so the funeral is here. And now the body is traveling to Eretz Yisrael to be buried on Eretz Yisrael. The people in America start shitting, sitting Shiva immediately. Once the body leaves, leaves your environs, it's like it's buried already. That's the idea of mm -hmm. burying. We're used to the idea, okay, we go to the cemetery, we bury the body, and now we're in Shiva. Right. What about this? who stay in America when the body is being flown to Israel. Do they wait now in a state of status? Nishta he, nishta her, not leaving here, neither here. They're not in No, that's not the case. Not the case. People who stay behind is in sitting shit and move. So now the question was, we have a zero about the most senior man who went with the body to bury the body? When the does he join in with the ship that already began, or does he start his own new ship? And we have a contradiction between two varieties. 
is where he rejoined them within the first three days of Shabbat. So that he joins him with all the way us and the way of us. That's when he didn't join them with the way of us. He takes his four days to the back of his belt. And at that point, he takes his own. Shiva. Jerry, uh, the sound of song. The bay, hot slope, and Rob told the people. Maybe, you know, and that's something you have here all the time. We can't hear. Jerry, we can hear you. Okay, the Lord, 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 that these mourners well, who are in the first few days of Shiva should count as a Christian. Those who did not come within the first few days, no, they should go to a different room in the house or a different house and begin sitting Shiva on their own. I, the Shivas, do not line up, so they don't line up. Rabba said to the people of Mechuzah, Rabba was the Rav. Those of you who did not follow the coffin to its place of burial, when you turn your faces away from the gates of the entrance of the city to return home, begin to count Shiva. Jeff, this is what I told you before. When the dead leaves your vision, essentially, leaves your environs, Shiva begins. That's what Rubber was saying. Exactly your question. You were, you were Mechavit to what, what Rubber told the people in the in Chuz. Okay. If, if you go to the cemetery, then it begins after burial. After burial. Correct. So for an example... The person who flies off to Israel with the body does not begin shiva until the body is buried. And then he begins shiva. What he's saying is he should sit in Israel for a day and then continue and come across. So I'll give an example. When my mother, Allah Shalom, was lifted in Boca Raton, we flew to New York on Sunday. We rise Korea. We were in New York on Thursday, and then we flew back to. Then we flew back to Boca Raton. When we flew back to Boca Raton, we were still already in the Shiva. And in fact, on the airplane, there were people who saw me sitting there with a ripped lapel on my jacket, and they came and were menachim me on the airplane. And that's the Yudhisar Locker. I stayed in New York. You stayed in New York. I came back and I, I went back to Boca Raton. And on the airplane, on the way back, there were people who were me on the airplane. Nice. Very that's nice. it. Right. You know, that's by it. the way, all this we could learn, we know that from when Yaakov Avinu died. Right. They transported him to Eretz it's, right. They said Shiva only after they buried him in the Moros Machpelah. No, Moros Machpelah, correct. The only reason why the Gemara doesn't bring proof from that is two reasons. One, it happened day. before Matan Torah, right. before the giving of the Torah, so it's hard to bring proof from anything that happened before Matan Torah. Number two, Yaakov Avinu was an Odom Choshuv. Remember, we learned yesterday. A prominent person is different. Because again, all of these halachas that we're learning today are all about proper decorum. They're not hard and fast rules. They're all traditions. For the covet of the but the answer is the covet of the dead and proper decorum. What is the proper way to behave? Yeah. And so for each person, it's a different book, as we're going to see later, that the Nasi, when the Nasi dies, the head, the head of our people at any given time, everybody, everybody the whole world has to be Misaba. So, here we go. Rav Shimon Oymer, Afilu Bal B'yayim Hashvim, Mokim Karev, 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 Mokim Karev,
to go on the last day of Shiva, that's it. You sit down, you sit for an hour with everybody else, and your Shiva is done. Okay? We're now on 22A2. 22A2. Amar Rabbi Amar Rabbi Chia, Begamda, Amar Rabbi Yosef, and Shol, Amar Rabbi. Behu Shiva, Umotza, Menanchem, Etzlai. This leniency is only if you arrive and you found that people were still being Menachem Ovel. There were still people coming to console the mourners. Vayar Abanon, if the more if the consolers knows it gets there at the last minute, and the people who came to be Menachem Ovel, the final people who came to be Menachem Ovel before the mourners got up are steering around. They got ants in the pants and they got about to get up. Getting ready to get up. And he comes running into the room. What's the halacha? Is it considered like they already got up? In which case, he came too late to be counted among the group and he has to begin his own shiva or not. And for the Gemara, take who teach for your tyrants because you boys, I'm not sure. We'll have to make belly oath. Therefore, and this is the rare case. Usually when we say take who, we go lechumra. We go stringently because we don't Not know that one. Case. Here we go leniently because we have the rule of Shmuel that we always follow the leniencies when it comes to Abelos. Mm -hmm. So in fact, here the leniency is that even if they're steering around and they're moving the chairs, etc., it's enough. You cover the Abelos and you're good to go. A friend of Rabbi Abba Bachia learned a minig, a tradition from Rabbi Abba. Umanu who? We're talking about Rabbi Zera. We're talking the friend was Rabbi Zera. The Amr lo chaved Rabbi Zera min Rabbi Zera, or a friend of Rabbi Zera learned it from Rabbi Zera. Who was that? Umanu Rabbi Abba Bachia, the Rabbi Kiyah Bar Abba. Regardless, they both said Amr Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan said, Aloch, ki Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel with the Rapos. The Aloch happens to follow Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel with regard to a specific law with regarding a trefa. What is a trefa? An animal that has an internal defect that it cannot live for more than a year. Now, you don't know that. It's eternal. So as Jerry Abramson can tell us, that when you chef the behemoth, when you slaughter the animal, right, and you open up the animal, you can see, you can find, if you find an internal defect, the animal has to be put to the side and sold to the guy. And the halach can have shimon by Abel. But the halach is like Rav Shimon in the case of Abel. Can have shimon by Abel, like we just said, somebody who shows up at the last minute when everybody is staring, when the final the final consolers are starting to get up, it's good enough. His Abelis is covered. Kid that I'm showing in Gamliel, it's rapist, it's not like we learned. Benay Mayim, the intestines, Shinikvu, that were punctured, so now it's trade. The lake is so salmon, but the mucus comes out and seals it like glue. The mucus from inside the body came out and sealed it like a glue. His shayra, it's considered kosher that it doesn't have a puncture. I have a question on that. Wait, 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 Dad, Dad, let's just finish this line over here. Okay. My lecha, what does it mean, mucus? See, the intestine sticking liquid comes out of it through pressure and seals it. Yes, what's the question? The question is first, you got the hole. Right, and then the mucus plugs it. Yeah. Then, so the moment you got the hole, it's already a trifle. Very good. Make it. You cannot reverse it. The the, the look at that point is this no good. So Here's I don't the answer. I'll what? be answering, but you know the answer. Unless the Torah, it's, you know the answer. The Torah was not given to Malachim. Are there bugs in the water? Maybe. Can you see him with the naked eye? Can you see him with the naked eye? Can you? No. no. So therefore, there are no bugs in the water. That's the halacha. 
right? Yeah. Now, look, is if I can't see the bugs, there are no bugs. I, there are bugs, right? They don't exist if I don't see them. Famous Gemara. The Gemara says about lice, right? The little bugs in the Isa, in the flower. They say they give birth immaculate conception, the Gemara says, right? There's no sex among them, okay? In fact, we know, of course there is. They're just too small to see. And with the end of shot is, if it's too small to see, by the halacha, by the law, it doesn't exist. Daddy, the trefa, how did I start this? What is a trefa? An in internal defect. When you see the animal, can you tell it's a trefa? Bedikas penim. Bedikas penim. Now, how do you do bedikas penim? And after you slaughter it, right? Yep. So yep. that means Daddy and Jerry and Jeff, at the moment of the slaughter, when Jerry Abramson is slaughtering the animal, he thinks this meat is going to be perfectly good for kosher, for the kosher establishment, for kosher dietary needs. For the members that have a need for kosher dietary needs, right? And then he does the bidika, and then he does the bidika, and he finds the flaw. Yeah, you're right. So the Mari here says, at the time that you did the bidika, you didn't see yeah. the flaw. Right. You saw a sealed up hole. Right, you right. that are an organic chemist who knows everything comes from carbon, and you think you can't. Have you can't have mucus unless there was a hole and the mucus came out of pressure, right? Came out from the pressure of the hole. It came out and sealed it. Uh, that's you going ahead and being a, a scientist because you're a scientist. But okay, you but it, a hole, there's but, no hole. But it's not uh, glad kosher. So it is kosher. But it's so not it glad. It's not, that's a different story. What Gladius will learn when we get to Chulin. Jerry Abramson can talk to you a lot about this. Okay. Because Jerry has told us on more than one occasion that only about 20% of slaughtered could really be used for kosher. Right, Jerry? I think you told us this. Jerry, you That's 20% to... of the tonnage because all the hindquarters are trade. And basically, on a good shvita, a maximum of 40% you could get kosher out of the front. So the other mm -hmm. 60% are not kosher. You add the 60 to the 50% of the hind quarters, all the hind quarters, 80% of the total tonnage is trade. Unbelievable. What I would you, never yeah. have known that. Jerry, that's, that is a fact. That's only, that's only because it, they, they did a special takana in 1963, the Igor Rabbanim, that basically ushered all in the United States all the hindquarters from being traber. So basically, yeah. we would have had 40% of the total tonnage, okay, uh -huh. would have been kosher, but they basically said that the, the nicker, there's no Hefstead kiss, there's no loss of money because we have a market for the trade. And right. therefore, we can do that. Outside of that, down in South America, as well as Israel, they do use the hindquarters. Interesting. And they're able to get, and yeah, they and Jerry, they're able to get rid of the gid anosha. They're able to get rid of the sciatic nerve. They know how to do yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. I didn't I even know that. I wouldn't trust that. All right. The point is, Daddy, but to answer your question. Yeah, you're the right. The answer to your question is, is that when you look at a thing, like I said, the bugs in the water, the bottom line is, I saw the Arach HaShulchan. The Arach HaShulchan writes that if you can't see bugs in the water, this is back 150 years ago in Nevada, there are no bugs. So, why, so why, why today are we using jeweler loops when they're checking my broccoli and cauliflower? And when this whole water situation came out, if you remember, yes. they were taking their wives, their wives' white snoots and checking, yeah. uh, checking for bugs. So I'd answer, Jerry, if you really want to, this is my opinion, mm. my opinion only. I happen to have on my shelf 
my Rebbe's, Rabelsky's first Pesach, first Pesach on the bugs in the water, which he says there's no problem. He says if Ramosha drank from the water in New York and the Satmarov drank from the water in New York, it's because there is no problems. You can't see it with the naked eye. Yeah, then, for whatever reason, he changed it. I never went with the change. The answer is, and again, this is my opinion, my opinion, I am certainly no Pisic, each man for his own, I'm not a rabbi, as you all well know. I, but I'm a work in progress, but people are being more Catholic than the Pope. That's my answer. That's my answer. They got too much time on their hands and they're finding problems. If you really want to know, that's my opinion. It's like the Shaitluk from India, all of a sudden, no good to, to, from Avoid the Zara. Right? Again, I don't know. Who am I? I'm not a Paisic. I don't know. I just think that when you got a when you when you got a lot of time, you find problems. That's it. But I listen, I could be wrong. I, I'm being straight up. I, I don't I don't know. I what 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 do I know? I know nothing. But but I do know what I saw in the Arch Shokhan, and I know what I saw Rabelsky's first sack, which is sitting buried in my shelf here in, in Brooklyn. Anyways. Daddy, that answers your question. With I believe that has to be the pshat, yeah, and that is the reason why. By the way, it answers your question. Why does Rav Kahana tell us Shirka de Mayo de Nofik Agav Duchaiko that the intestine sticky liquid it comes out through pressure? What do I care? Why do I care whether how it comes out? I know what then, you then, then again you know that it plugs it plugs it well. Okay, I know that. Yeah. Okay, I know. I know. Although I must say. I would not drive a car with such a plug on my tire. Okay, in your tire. Exactly. On the other hand, Daddy, I seem to remember you were driving around with a tire with a bubble in it for, right. a, for a month. So right. don't, don't be so bright. I Anyways, didn't know. So if, I, if, if I don't oh, see it, it's not what? there. There you go. If you don't, my father was driving with a tire with a bubble. And it's only when he had a handyman in the house who noticed it that we had to take care of it. My father could have been driving around with this bubble in the tarp for a year. But if you don't see it, it don't <clears> exist. <throat> I can't bring a better proof. Can't bring a better proof. Exactly. All right. Let's go. By the way, by the way, if you want to know where this is in Aloha, Sefer Torah. If you're learning from a Sefer Torah and you find a mistake in the Sefer Torah, do we say that all the other previous weeks and years of reading from the Sefer Torah no. were no good? No. What do we say? Now, this yeah, moment, man. it became possible. Until then, it was good. Why? Who are we kidding? The answer is that Allah is, if I don't see it, it don't exist. Well, you can find that rule in every facet of halacha. If I don't see it, it don't exist. Okay. I'll give you another example. Star, a contract, sho'aymid ligboiz, kegoi v'domi, or lap kegoi v'domi. A star that's already written to be given over. Is it, is it like it's already given over a contract or not like it's given over yet? Right? The Shammai says if the contract's already written, it's like it's given over already. If Priscilla says when it's given over, it's given over. The argument is this argument. Priscilla says when it gets to your hand, it's in your hand. Until it gets to your hand, I don't care. I don't know about this contract. Right? right. The Shammai says no, but of course it's not like Priscilla. Right? If the logic behind it is the same logic going all the way through. Anyways, let's keep going over here. Uh, good, we're going to finish We're going to finish today. The I'm a man to who, somebody whose name we do not know, heard these teachings of Rabbi Yochanan. He said like that, Iske ba'aste b'gomer l'shamate b'pumi demores. Oh, that I should merit to go up there to saw and learn it from the mouths of the master himself. He saw it when he got the opportunity, this guy this man given up to Yisrael, ask him of the Rebbe Abba, the Raider of Chiyavar Abba. Amalei, he asked him, Amama, Allah to Rav Shimon Gamliel betrayed Did you really say that Allah is like Rav Shimon Gamliel in the name of Rav Yochanan? That what he called Allah is like Shimon Gamliel in the case of a betrayed that if it gets plugged up with the mucus, the intestines, it's good. Amalei, he said, No, I'm not. Ain't Allah Amri. I said that Allah is not like it. Right? I said it's not like it. 
What's the thing? Amalei plucked in the. That's an argument. The itma. The chizda mahalochet aloch is like Reb Shimon. That what do you call it? That if the people are staring around or moving around, right? You, it's okay. He still considers Reb Shimon shiva. Chayin Amar Reb Yochanan and aloch. But Reb Nachman Amar Ein aloch is aloch is not like it. Good. We're now on twenty two a three, the bottom of the oven. Is always like the lenient opinion when it comes to Avelis. So if he says you show up at the last minute and people are still there consoling, even though they're about to get up, it's good enough. It's as if you sat Shiva all seven days. But because all things are about it, and again, it's mm-hmm. more than just Rabban and Dan. It's tradition. It's all mm-hmm. about proper etiquette. That is really the thing. It's a moving t- it's, The example would perfectly be we just had the first yard site of my mother. I asked my father, do we have the minig to fast on the day of the yard site? And my father said, no, we don't, which is what I knew. But nonetheless, I asked him. The Hasidim fast on the day of the yard site. That's what they do. We don't. We don't. Whereas my father says, we're not on a madrego. We're not on such a level that fasting brings us any meaning, any more great consolation than anything else. But those are traditions. There are people that hold to these. Traditions are greater than a din. So much of our lives revolve around tradition. That's the truth. Where tradition ends and the actual halacha begins is a very gray area. And that's a much longer discussion than for this daf. I mean, if we want to discuss it when we finish the daf today, we could. Okay, so we go further. I'll call Mason Kulam. The Rebbe taught that when the morning was for all, all deceased relatives, except for, of course, for your father and your mother, one who expedients taking out the burial is praiseworthy. Bury them quick. This is embarrassing. They're condemned. That does not mean that you don't bury them the same day. But first, you give a hesped, you eulogize them the proper way. Number two, as is the minic that we do when we get to the cemetery, we do not go straight to the burial site. We carry it, we put down the urn. Carry it again a few feet, put down the urn. Like seven times, you go ahead back and forth. Obviously, if it's the middle of the winter, you don't do this. But when the weather is warmer, you go ahead and you put down the body seven times and you say, as many times as you can in order to extend it. But if the burial is on Erev Shabbos or Erev Yontif, on the contrary, very quickly. Because the speed is only being done for the honor of the father and his mother that they shouldn't stay over unburied an extra day. I'll call Mesa, you see, it's not halacha, it's proper etiquette. I'll call on Mesa and Kulay for all other deceased also, relatives. Uh, other uh, one uh, uh, what? Yeah, it's in the Chavah of Shabbat, of course. Yeah. But, but daddy, I want to point out that the Gemara never uses those words that you just said. The Gemara never uses the words about the Neshama. You know why? Because, because that's unknown. That's yeah. Kabbalistic. Right. We, our job is to do honor to our parents. That's the mitzvah that is in front of us. Right. Again, we're mitzvahs end. And Kabbalistic holdings begin is a very gray area. Much bigger discussion about the current the current uh, situation of Judaism. Where halacha ends and minig begins and Kabbalistic teachings begin. It's become very opaque. All of those things together. Lab dafka for the betterment. It's something to be thought about. Okay? I'll call Mason 
Al on all relatives other than one's father and mother, Rotsam Mamayit if he wants to restrict his business activity, he's allowed to. And if he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. We're now on other days. 22B, 22B1. In the ayat, he can restrict. Half days on the base, 22B1. Al other al Mamayit, but with regard to his father and his mother, he must restrict his business activity. Akala Mason Kulai on all the seas related, Rots and Khalits, Rots and Khalits. If he wants to bear his shoulder, he can bear his shoulder. Al other Valima Khalits, he must bear his shoulder. Vice of the Godal Adar Echad, it was a story with one of the great Gadar, with the Godal Adar, one of the great ones of the generation, Shemais Ovid, whose father passed away, who became the Khalits, and he wanted to bear his shoulder. Ubikesh Godol Ador Acher and another great person of the generation wanted wanted to join him in bearing his shoulder and show of sympathy. But Nimran, he changed his mind, the like and he didn't bear the shoulder so that the other uh, uh, the other great sage shouldn't go ahead and bear his shoulder. Today we do not bear the shoulders. The reason is because we live among the Goyim. And if they saw us that way, they think we were out of our minds. Pasht. Okay. Yeah. And Did if they make fun of us, nice. who are they making fun of? They're making fun of the dead. And there it's a, it's a dishonor to you mm-hmm. to the dead. Amar Abaya, Godel Ador. Who's the Godel Ador? Rabbi. Rabbi HaKadosh. Right? Rabbi HaKadosh. The one who wrote, redacted the Mishnah. Godel Adoshi, why? Who is the Godel Ador with him? Rabbi Yaakov Baracha, Rabbi Yaakov Baracha. The Ikad Yami, just the opposite. Godel Ador, Rabbi Yaakov Baracha, Godel Adoshi, my the great one among who was with him was Rabbi Yaakovish. So says the Gemara. Bin Eishlemet, and in a typical, a typical Jewish person, you tell a story. The other guy tells you, number one, that wasn't the story. That's the story. Number one, the story didn't happen that way. And number three, you don't know how to tell the story, right? And this is where do we get that from? Right here in the Gemara. That the other great one in the generation was Rabbi Akkad, Rabbi Akkad, Rabbi the Rabbi Akkad, Rabbi Akkad, That's why Rabbi Akkad didn't go ahead and bear his own shoulder because he didn't want to be pegeya in the covet. He didn't want to interfere in the honor of the holy Rabbi Akkad. El Lamadi, I'm a Rabbi Akkad, Rabbi Akkad. But what it says that the other sage was Rabbi Yaakov, am I Nim Nabaloi Cholitz? Why did Rabbi not refrain and not bear his shoulder in order to spear his colleagues into doing the same? Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Nasi Hoya. Rabbi's father, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, was the Nasi, the head from the family of Hillel, the Kula Alma Mechai of the Mechalitz. Everyone is obligated to bear the shoulders to mourn the passing of the Nasi. Because yeah. the Nazi is like the father of us all. So I didn't think, and in fact, the cover that has to be given to a Nazi is it on par with keep it out of aim in Aloka. It is on par with your Rebbe Muvik. Yeah. A Rebbe Muvik, you have to stand Mole Enoch, not just for Amit, but as long as your eye can see him. You see your father, you have to honor him as long as your eye can see him. A Nasi, you have to honor it, even if his eyes can see it. But all three of them, if they're Michael Kavaida, they cover his Michael. It's a much longer conversation. So the Kasha so says, the Gemara, it's a Kasha. It's difficult. Now, a Kasha doesn't mean it's a Yukta, because you could have answered. It's true that everybody has, everybody has the, um, the, the what do you call it? Everybody has to bear their shoulders when the Nasi dies. But Rebbe said, I don't have to be the cause of that. If he sees me bearing his shoulder, he's immediately going to bear his shoulder. He's going to do it for my honor. It's not, not, just, my- not, not just them. All the people, even the plain people who went to the Labaya had to That's also it. bear their shoulder. Right, but what I'm saying is we can answer up that Rebbe said he's going to be, uh, he's going to bear his shoulders not for the sake of my father, but for my sake. And I don't want him to do that. Number two, number two, as we're going to see, for a father and a mother, 
There's a sheet that says you bear both shoulders. To everybody else, you bear one shoulder. Yeah, it could be that Rabbi Yaakov is going to go ahead and bear both shoulders. And that Rebbe didn't want. We don't know. Okay, so anyways. But the Gemara applies with the cash. We don't do that anymore. We don't do it anymore because like I said, because they, these people think we're crazy. Literally five more minutes we're going to go and then we're going to be finished here. Because it's just smack dab in the middle of the sugis. Here we go. When mourning for all the deceived member other than a father and mother, one cuts his hair after 30 days. For a mother and a father, one does not cut his hair until his friends tell him, reproach him that he's beginning to look like a mess. So I will tell you this, after 30 days, my father told me, you look like a mess. So there you go. Now, here's an interesting thing, by the way. My hair, I was not allowed to take a haircut and shave. My father, after one week, the truth is, was allowed to. Because a wife is not a father and a mother. Interesting. Very fan. As my father said, it's very hard to understand, to contemplate. But in halacha, a wife, as you can see from here, it's only a father and a mother that you got to wait 30 days before you can take, you have to be told you look like a mess. Interesting. I'll call a mace and cool on. I, I must, didn't take a haircut after a week. I know, but if you look in the Gemara, it says you don't have to wait for somebody to tell you. Okay, I'm just saying the Allah is, sometimes you have to look at the Allah and just analyze it. It's interesting. I'll call a mace, in other words, blood is thicker than water. Anybody who's mourning anybody except for a father and a mother is allowed to go to a house of celebration after 30 days. After 12 months. What are we talking about? A simcha of friendship. But you're not allowed to go to a truly joyous event such as a wedding even after 30 days. We do not hold like this anymore, except, of course, for somebody who lost a parent, which then he doesn't go to any simchas, more or less, all year long. Or if he does go to a simcha, he sits in a room outside, gets a job at the wedding, and does not dance unless he's directly, unless he's not dancing, will affect the joy of the participants of the wedding. In that case, he does dance for a few minutes, right at the beginning of the wedding, and then beginning of the dancing, and then goes back and stands on the side. <laughs> to attend a celebration, or to, to to attend a celebration, or attend a celebration of friendship, it's 30 days. Since the Bryson speaks about simcha, celebration, and simcha is and a simcha, a celebration of friendship, it's obvious and now we're on 22B2. That it really means a joyous event like a wedding. Kasha to Kasha. Very good. I don't understand the Kasha. What's the Kasha? Everybody says after 30 days it's okay. No, back up. It doesn't say that. Yeah. Right. That means only a simcha of friendship, but not a real <laughs> simcha. Not a real simcha. Oh, the simcha of I see. Oh, you oh, see I that? See. You see the words? The simcha. Yeah, yeah, the bob. The bob. The mice. So the, the simcha means a thing. wedding. Celebration and celebration of friends. Uh, so I that see. must mean even a wedding. Where's this kasha? But today we do hold that way after for everybody else except for a parent. Ema amema masni hochi amar abba babachanel is simcha mereyus smuta lichnas ta'alta. In fact, for a celebration of friendship, you're allowed to enter immediately after the shiva. For Tanya is simcha shloishim with Maria shloishim for celebration and for friendship thirty days. Like Asha Habari Susa, this which says you're not allowed to go until after 30 days is the initial banquet that they, in other words, you have five friends and they make up 
before the person passed away that each one is going to hold a party every 30 days. So the first party, which did not happen before the Avelos, that you can't go until the past in 30 days. Oh, the This is where a reciprocal banquet. So in other words, your friend already made one. Now it's your turn to make one. And it falls out during your slicing, you can go. You can go and you can make your party. Yeah, although I'm just saying you, you should really try to make arrangement with someone else. You know what? Take my turn. I'll take your turn. Okay. Later. Goodbye. So here we learn something great. Friendship. Nothing is as great as a chaver. We're going to learn this. And from my chaverim, I learned the most. From my friends, I learned the most. Friends. The Gemara makes a big deal about good friends. Don't interfere with that. You don't have to do that. Yeah, but don't a friend be... would understand. True, but the Gemara says, don't rely on his understanding. Don't be more Catholic than the Pope. I'm telling you that after, except for a father and a mother, afterwards you could go ahead and join if it's already, if the if the series of parties has already begun, in that case, the right thing to do is join in with the with the simcha. Don't go ahead and drive them all crazy to switch venues and somebody else to take over and all this. Don't that that's that's for your feelings. Okay. Don't take your feelings and dump them on somebody else. Don't put a damper on other people's party. Okay. You see, and that's that's the line. You have to recognize that. It's a it's understanding that you, having lost a relative, are not in the mood to make this party. The Gemara understands that. You know what the Gemara says? It's not about you. It's never about you. It's either about the deceased or it's about your friends. Be a half to the reyacha kamoichi. You should love your friends like yourself. Im ain't anili nili, abba kishala anila atz mi money. If I'm not for me, who is? But if I'm only for me, what am I? Don't be narcissistic. Even on feelings that are legitimate, the Gemara is coming to tell you that's not as important as the other guy's feelings. It's a very deep lesson going on here. The Gemara understands you don't want the party. You're in no mood for the party. You're in a bad mood. You're not in a good place. You know okay. what the Gemara says? Slap a smile on your face. Your face is a Rishus Rabbi. Nobody's got to know that inside you're in no mood for this. On your face, you throw up a, a, a smile because that's your job. Right. Says the Gemara. I'll call on Mason Kula Kara Tefach. For everybody else, we rent to, to close a Tefach. I'll over Valimo Yachi Gala Sliba, you rip it all the way until he exposes the heart. And we do. You rip it over here, we go all the way. Amar Abu my crawl, where do we see this? By Dovid Amalek when Abshalom passed away. But he acts like Dovid be big to the Ukraine. And Dovid took hold of his garments and rent them. The Ainachiz of Possum Mitabach. And taking cold is nothing less than a tepa. Because when you grab it, you grab it with your entire palm, which is, of course, a tepa. Even if you're wearing 10 shirts, you only rip the outer one. You rip all of them. In our case, we rip our jacket and we rip the shirt that's underneath it. Okay? Okay? But rendering his kerchief is not necessary. If you all remember back in the day, we, I still remember when I was young, there were men that always walked around with a kerchief around their neck, right? They would roll it up like this. You don't have to rent that. Even though it's part of your dress, it's not, not really. Whether it's a man or a woman, they both have to rise creel. She first rips the inside garment and turns it to her back because there's the kairos, and then she rips the first one. So in other words, her skin is never actually exposed. 
I'll call Mesa, obviously for Tzniyus purposes, for modesty purposes. Right. I'll call a Mesa Kuloi, with rendering the garment for all the seasons except for appearance, Ratzel Mavdul Kamei Sopha if he wants, he can separate the garment beyond the border of the neck slit, beyond the border around the neck. Ratzel Eina Mavdul, Alav Eval Imoi, Mavdul 22B3, this is where we're going to stop over here. Uh, we got a, uh, actually, we're going to stop on 22 before to the schedule. But for appearance, he has to separate the garment beyond the border. Any rendering which does not separate beyond the border, is useless. Why does Rabbi Yehuda say that? Because he took, we're talking about again, David Amelech. Yeah. This is actually, I'm sorry, Elisha, the prophet, the Elisha Anovi, when he saw Elio Anovi go up in the chariot and disappear into heaven, right? He took hold of his garments and he rent them into two, two torn pieces. In other words, he ripped the clothes into two. Now, why two? When he used the word become and he ripped them, plural, don't I know it means two? The rent has to look like two distinct rents, right? So, in other words, from the neck and the clothes itself. One is allowed to glue back together the rent in the in the after seven days of shiva and sew it up properly after thirty days of shloshim. You're allowed to paste it back together after thirty. But hey, my uncle, you to be now let us sew it up properly. But for Isha, Shayalta, La Alta, Mithne, Kavoyda. But a woman is allowed to immediately after she rides his Kriya, she's allowed to glue it back together on account of her arm. You can see how poor people were that they only had one set of clothing in their lifetime. So getting rid of clothing is Yes, God. Yes, God. Is this halacha? Is this halacha? That what? In other words, we're, we're talking right now in the Gemara, but it's that you're allowed to, whatever you did, Creon, you're allowed to basically put together back after after your uh, your availance. That's correct. You're allowed to glue it back together. You can't sew it back together. Unless, yeah, it, yeah, but yeah. unless it's a bit, oh, but that's only by parents. The big by thing. any other relative, you're allowed to go ahead and sew it back together. We don't do that. What do we do? We throw it away because we can afford clothes is so cheap. But in reality, yes, you can. And you know the reason why? Because of Baal Tashvis. You're not allowed to waste. That's the truth. Today, because we normally do not wear clothes that are patched, we don't wear patched clothes, right? That's not called Baal Tashvis anymore because nobody wears patched clothes anymore. But if they were still wearing patched clothes, Right, so let's say heaven forbid I'll give the up. World War Three breaks out in the next month or so, right after the Olympics. Okay, World War Three breaks out after the Olympics, and the, and the world goes to hell in a handbasket. And now we're back in the dark ages. Yeah, you would walk around with patch clothing because that's what we've been able to afford. There you go. The only thing we would still have is the Talmud. There you go. It's not so far fetched, by the way, everybody. On all of the dead, you're allowed to either rip rice clear by hand or use an instrument. You could use a knife. So what they do today is they take a knife, a pocket knife, they cut a small cut, and then with your own hands, you rip. You rip because the clothes. Otherwise, it's too difficult. To otherwise, because you can't. We can't do it. Today, our clothes are not made to rip. Mm -hmm. So then we have to start it. But the rest of it, the, the, the rip all the way down towards your heart, takes place with your own hands. All other deceased relatives you can do on the inside, an inside garment, the whole world doesn't have to see the Kriya. Because you do it on the outside. That's When the Nazi died, everybody has to rip their clothes on the outside. 
They did not equate one's father and mother, except with regard to sowing the rent properly. But they are not equated with one's father or mother with regard to making a rent on the outside. My love, I feel a Nazi. That even a Nazi, you don't have to rip on the outside. No, it means everybody but the Nazi because a Nazi has a din like a parent. Nazi, Nasi is shocking. And what happened that the Nazi died? Amalei Rav Chizdul Rav Chana Bar Rav. Rav Chizdul said to Rav Chana Bar Rav, twenty-two before this is where we're stopping. Tape Yasisa Vekum Allah, turn over the mortar and stand on top of it. In other words, be public. The Achdi Kriyla Alma and show your act of ripping your clothes to the public so that everybody knows that for the Nazi. Everybody must rip their clothes and be shown to have ripped clothes because the covet of the Nazi. Very good. We made it right there, 915, right on.